Welcome back everybody. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I have a list video for you today and so I'm going to take you through some comforting scents. Scents that I turn to when I am feeling a little bit anxious or I'm feeling a little bit stressed and I want something that will help put me into a more calm mood. And I have actually quite a few. I was surprised when I went through my collection and sort of plucked out the really obvious ones that I always turn to. And then a few others that I have used in the past for this purpose, but which I may not have turned to recently simply because I've forgotten that I had them. I've ended up with about 19 fragrances so consequently this is going to be a bit of a fun one today i just uh, i didn't want to have to think too much uh, the last few videos have been quite intense in terms of me putting together words <laughs> me putting together thought streams so i wanted to just do something that was fairly easy and plus Mark and Carla from Aussie Fragrance are hosting a sniffy at their house this afternoon and a few of us from their Facebook group are heading over to their place um, with lots of perfumes in tow for everyone to sort of smell each other's stuff basically. I know it's uh, when I say that out loud it sounds like such a weird concept but yeah we're basically going to go sniff perfume for the afternoon. Um, so I had better get going on this otherwise I will be late. So without a doubt, one of the most go-to fragrances for me when I want to feel calm is Nefertum by Tion Reintel Parfums. You guys have heard me talk about this in great detail many times before. I've talked about it a lot. Uh, I've also done, I think, a full review of this. I'll try and link that somewhere here. Um, this is a really, it's a natural perfume, so it does have that natural kind of vibe going on. It doesn't smell overly refined. It's not something that you would smell in a department store. It has a lot of florals. It's got a really beautiful ambery base. The Tion Reintel has a very distinctive ambery base, I think, um, which is a, a consistent sort of DNA in most of her fragrances, although she, her fragrance repertoire is massive. So um, she does have quite a few different variations of different styles of perfumes. Anyway, rambling. Um, this is just a really beautiful ambery floral with some spices in there. You know, things like cinnamon, you know, the brown kind of spices, but it's, they're not super dry in here. A lot of the times when I'm drawn to a fragrance that has lots of spice in it, I'm drawn to it because it's very you know, it's very dry and um, the spices are really punchy. In this, they don't punch at all. They're very soft and they blend in with the florals and the amber really, really beautifully. Um, I just, I really adore this fragrance and it's nearly done. So I'm a bit sad. Ironically, I only have this 10 ml bottle of this one, but this is probably my favorite fragrance from the Tion Reintel range or at least of the ones that I've tried because there are there are a lot. This was the first one I ever bought from her and so I only have it in a 10 mil. Subsequently I've taken advantage of her sales and things and I've bought full bottles of other things but the one that I love the most is the one that I only had a tiny bottle of and I'm not sure if she even has it anymore. I'm going to have to get back on the website and have a look. But sadly, I can't buy it this year because I'm on a no buy. Anyway, when this is done, then it's done, at least for this year. All right, well, so that was Nefertum. The next one that I really like to wear when I want to feel comforted, and I should say there's different types of comfort that I seek sometimes. Sometimes comfort for me is um, just wanting to feel cozy and comfortable at home. And then sometimes it's because I might be feeling anxious or really stressed and I want something that's going to, you know, bring those cortisol levels down a little bit. And this is one of the ones that I like to wear just because it's kind of cozy and I want to, I want to feel comforted in a way that, you know, I'm not necessarily stressed, but I, I just want to feel a little bit cozy at home. So this is Tolu by Ormond Jane 
and this is just so beautiful it's quite sophisticated and quite elegant for something that you know I might wear around the house but I do wear this out as well it has a formality about it that's for sure um, it's just it's based around tolu balsam and it is very balsamic it's very resinous kind of fragrance it's not too heavy it, there's a powdery element to it there's an aromatic element to it I think there's clary sage in here there's also some really gorgeous florals in here I think there's orange blossom and rose and lily of the valley so the florals really help to soften the aromatic notes and also maybe the more balsamic aspects of the resins that are in here. It's still balsamic, but there's definitely a soft, powdery, more enveloping element to this fragrance. The next one I like to wear in these sorts of circumstances, and again, I think this is more one where I'm not necessarily feeling anxious, but I do want to feel comforted somehow. And this is Chalamar Eau de Toilette. I only have a little 30 ml bottle of this, but I mean, I have a lot of Shalimar's, so I don't really need a big bottle of it. Uh, the reason I like the Eau de Toilette in this scenario, maybe over the Eau de Parfum, which is sort of my go-to Shalimar, is because the Eau de Toilette has less of that really uh, pithy, lemony opening that the uh, Eau de Parfum has. And this gets to that beautiful powdery, ambery dry down a lot faster, I think, than the Eau de Parfum does. And so that's why I like to wear this one. I feel like this is more powdery right off the bat compared to the Eau de Parfum where you have that really lemony opening, which is quite oily. Uh, it's like the lemon rind. And so it, consequently, it can be a little bit bitey. And then you go through various phases of it feeling a little bit leathery and, and then eventually you get to this beautiful, um, stunning, powdery, ambery dry down. But um, I, I do like the Eau de Toilette for the fact that it gets to that place a lot faster, but it's maybe not as deep. And definitely I don't think this is as sweet either in the dry down. So the next one is one that I definitely turn to for calming me down if I'm in an anxious state and the reason is because this smells to me like I would imagine a meditation hall to smell like even though I have spent quite a bit of time in a meditation hall and it smells nothing like this but this is how I would imagine I would want a meditation hall to smell like and this is Kama Sarabi by Lorenzo Villaresi Ferenzi this was given to me by my friend Emma um, and she just thought I would like it and she was right. <laughs> so this has a really beautiful blend of things like jasmine and ylang ylang and there's also a hint of orange blossom in here as well. I sort of get that just that slightly soapy vibe that you can get from orange blossom and there's rose in here as well. Um, but then there's lots of sandalwood in the base and it just smells like, you know, when you go into those stores that have lots of incense and, and yoga books and all those sorts of things, maybe it's kind of the smell of incense, I guess, but it's not really that incense-y. It's just, it's mostly the sandalwood with the florals for me. I think there's also meant to be like a leather accord and stuff in here as well. I don't get that much leather from it. For me it's definitely more those exotic florals, the sandalwood and um, on an ambery base. It is actually really really nice. It's not something that I would want to wear out. This is definitely something that I want to wear at home when I want to find a moment of quiet. I might also consider wearing this to yoga as well because it is very subtle um, and I guess it fits the theme of doing yoga, so probably wouldn't put anyone off. The yoga that I do is hot yoga though, so literally within the first 10 minutes you've pretty much sweated off any fragrance that you're wearing anyway, so not really a big deal. Anyway, so that is Kama Sarabi by Lorenzo Villaresi Ferenzi. So the next one is Feb Delicious by Maison Christian Dior. Now this one, it was a bit, of, a bit of a toss up. I was tempted to choose Tonka Imperial by Guerlain. To me, these are 
totally different fragrances, but they are kind of in the same ballpark because they're very Tonka heavy. This one has a lot more going on in it. There's a lot of spices blended in here, whereas Tonka Imperial, I think, is more focused around A, the Tonka. I feel like the Tonka is more front and center because it's not competing as much with other things as this one. But um, there's sort of woods and incense in Tonka Imperial as well. But I also feel like Tonka Imperial is a much more formal scent. It's a, for me, it's a getting dressed up and going out scent. Whereas this one is more, I want to sit at home and cozy up on the couch with a good book and a hot chocolate and something woolly, you know, a cozy blanket or something. That This is more informal to me. And so consequently, I chose this one for this particular list because when I'm in a state where I want to feel comforted, the last thing I want to do is get dressed up and go out because I'm very much an introvert and my home is my safe space and that's where I like to be most of the time, particularly when I'm not feeling good. This fits the vibe of what I would want to do in a scenario where I want to feel comforted or I want to feel calm. So that is why I chose Feb Delicious. So the next one is Infusions to Iris by Prada. Um, this is my bottle is nearly done. It's going to be finished within the next couple of months, I think. I love this fragrance. This is sort of a cold green iris. And the reason I like to use, why I turn to this one quite a bit in a scenario where, where I want to feel comforted is because this pretty much lives on my bedside table. And even if I'm wearing something else to bed, sometimes right before I go to sleep, I will spritz some of this on. This fragrance is the fragrance that I associate with that moment of getting into bed and you're just, ah, you know, that, that sense of well-being that you get from just finally at the end of a long day or when you've got clean sheets and you, you just want to snuggle into bed and you finally get into bed and it's just so nice. This is that scent for me now. And consequently, I, that this is one that I do like to wear for feeling comforted. It's also quite subtle. Like, you know, it's not a huge projecting fragrance. So I think it's good for that reason as well. Um, I recently did a post, the reason I am doing this video today actually is because I did a post on Instagram this week. So when this video goes live, it'll probably be a couple of weeks ago. And I asked people what they turn to for comfort, you know, in terms of scent. And my friend Innes commented that she likes to go for fragrances that aren't too strong, not too sweet, not too bold. Uh, things that are more clean and powdery and subtle uh, because when she's because for her when she's feeling anxious she doesn't want to feel more overwhelmed she doesn't want to have her senses bombarded by you know really strong fragrances so which I totally understand but <laughs> I do have quite a few fragrances in my comfort list that I turn to that are not actually that subtle but they still give me that really beautiful cozy feel. Next up is Shun Queen by Zerzhov. This is one that I wasn't going to buy because to me this, when I first smelled this, I thought my immediate thought was it smells a little bit like a combination of Cashmere by Vicanto and uh, Tonka Imperial by Guerlain. But after wearing it for a while, I realise that it is different to that combination, but and it's very special in its own right. And I do love wearing this. And I will tell you that sometimes I really go to town when I spray this. I this is one of the few fragrances that I will happily just spray to my heart's content when I want to wear it. Because uh, I don't actually wear it that much. Um, I do tend to reserve this for when I want to feel cozy or when I want to feel comforted. So um, I, this is not something that I would just wear every day. This is a moment for me, this fragrance. You know, I, this, is, I, this is a deliberate choice. If I'm wearing this, this isn't just something that I pick up and spray on. This is, I've, you know, I have a reason for wanting to wear it. And what does it smell like? It's very powdery and woody. I feel like it does have that cashmere wood thing going on in it. There's Tonka, it's very dry, powdery, 
Yeah, it's basically a dry, powdery, woody vanilla, I think. I think there's a vanilla element to this as well, but the vanilla is not super, super sweet. Uh, it's very subtle. I love it. I love this fragrance. And, and I'm so glad that my friend Jackie introduced me to this. She herself, I think, has been through almost two bottles of this. So, um, you know, she really loves it, but I, I definitely am really enjoying this. But again, it's not something that I wear all the time. You know this list isn't going to be complete if I don't mention Sandalwood Temple by Sana Jaran. I love this fragrance, which you already know, but I surprisingly have not worn this lately. Oh, although that may change after doing this video today. This is one of those scenarios where it was buried in the second drawer of my cabinet thing and I just hadn't looked at it for a while. And I do think of it sometimes, but usually when I think of it, I'm upstairs in my bedroom and then I can't be bothered coming all the way down here to get it. And again, I've spoken about this many, many times. This is a really beautiful woody vanilla. It's a sweet wood, but it's not super, super sweet, but there is a sweetness to it. And then when you, I don't get it so much when I smell it out of the bottle, but when I spray it um, or when I'm wearing it, I definitely pick up a smoky incense note, but it's, it blends in, it's not overly smoky. It just has the right amount of smoke to it, which just makes it feel really quiet and calm without, you know, feeling like you're being bombarded with smoke. There's vetiver in here as well. I think there might be I don't know what florals are in here and I haven't looked up the notes for a while, but there's definitely an element of floral in here, but it def it takes a back seat to the woods and the vanilla and there's, it, it is quite powdery as well. You know, I love this one. I'm not going to rave on about it again, but definitely one that I like to wear when I want to feel comforted. And the other thing I guess I want to mention about this one in terms of how I wear it is if I have to go to work and I'm feeling really anxious or I'm nervous about something, you know, I have to do a big presentation or, you know, I'm just feeling anxious about work for some reason. This is one that I would wear to work in that scenario. Um, Tolu and uh, Shalimar Eau de Toilette I would also wear in that scenario to work. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out that this isn't just one that I wear at home. This is one that I will wear in a scenario where I have to go out. It's also quite an intimate fragrance too. It doesn't project a whole lot as far as I can tell. So for that reason, I think it's quite introspective. The next one is one I haven't talked about for a long time, I don't think. But it's a bottle that's been in my collection since 2016, I think. Anyway, this is Vetiver Fatale by Atelier Cologne. I mean, I find this really comforting, but you might think this is a bit of an odd choice for this particular list. Um, it is a really sort of sim simple, it is quite a fresh citrusy vetiver fragrance. Um, there is a hint of sweetness in there too. So I think there is a bit of vanilla in here. But the reason I find this comforting is because this reminds me of a time in my life where I had been through quite a period of upheaval and stress and anxiety and I came out the other end and it was a scenario where the worst thing that I could imagine happening happened and I came out, I came through it and I got through it in a way where I just felt like I was really winning at life <laughs> and so this, for that reason, is a great one for me to wear when I want to feel comforted or if I'm feeling anxious, particularly if I'm feeling anxious in a way where I feel like I'm, you know, um, I'm losing <laughs> at life or I'm just, I'm failing at something. I like to wear this because it reminds me of a time when I felt like I'd been through this horrible period and then suddenly it was like the sun came out and you know a few things fell into place and life just felt very easy and you know I was doing the things that I wanted to be doing and 
anyway, it was, it's a very, as I said, it's a very personal choice, this one. I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to be the type of scent that other people would find particularly comforting. Um, but again, I mean, it's, it's very uh, citrusy and sparkly and light. Um, and that vetiver is quite dry. So vetiver is a really good scent, I think, for comforting type fragrance because it is sort of that grassy, woody um, kind of vibe. Anyway, that is Vetiver Fatale by Atelier Cologne. The next one probably isn't going to be a surprise. This is Panthea Iris by Stefan Umbia Lucas 777. Again, I love this fragrance because it is powdery. It's very light. It's quite whimsical to me. Oh, it's just so beautiful. It probably is a little bit more on the formal side for something that I would want to wear in a scenario where I want to feel kind of comforted, but I like it for its powderiness. I like it for, it, you know, it's, you can smell it, but it's not screaming at you. There's nothing screechy in here. It's all very soft and blended beautifully. And as I said, it's quite whimsical. So it, it lifts your mood a little bit, I feel. Um, again, this is probably one that I would wear to work on a day where I was feeling anxious or nervous. And so this is a really good one for that. The next one is Kintsugi by Mask Milano. This is a really beautiful fragrance and it is so hard to describe. When I first smelled this, I thought it had vetiver in it, but it doesn't have vetiver, but it does, it has this amazing combination of notes that when you read it, you think, you either can't think what that would smell like, or you imagine something completely different to what this smells like. And for that reason, it's just, it is such an oddball fragrance, but it's gorgeous. It's, I don't know why I don't wear it more. This, although having said that, this is, it's very powerful as well. It does project, I think, quite a bit. Again, it's hard for me to tell you if something's projecting or not, because normally I can smell fragrances on me, <laughs> but if no one else is commenting on them, it's hard for me to know if other people smell them or not. So this, this fragrance to me, it conjures up an image of golden fields of wheat or some kind of crop, you know, it's just with a sunset in the background, you know, it's just this beautiful golden hued fragrance, but it also has a smoky element to it. Um, but it's not incense. I mean, it's not, I don't know if it's frankincense. It doesn't smell resinous. There is a, but it sort of has a smoky thing going on in it. Um, you know what? I'm going to look up the notes. So the, the notes are, well, I'm just reading this off for Grantica, so it's probably not a complete note listing, but, uh, the notes are magnolia, bergamot, amber, suede, rose, violet leaf, raspberry leaf, patchouli, cyan, benzoin, and vanilla. So there is a sweetness to this fragrance, which surprised me because for the first time I sm smelled it, I kind of thought it smelled really dry and, you know, grassy, but um, dried grass, not green grass, not, not galbanum type grass. But there is a sweetness to this and I picked it up later on as I started wearing it more and more. Um, there is a beautiful sweet underlay to this fragrance. Um, which softens everything. But if you can imagine a golden dried grass with a hint of smoke coming through, there's a warmth to it. There, it's, it's like a dry, warm breeze. And maybe, yeah, maybe I do get a little bit of that spicy, benzoiny sweetness. It is really, really beautiful. So if you do like goldeny type fragrances if you like dry fragrances there's a dryness to this even though it also has a sweetness to it um, and there is but it's the dryness isn't sharp it's softened beautifully i think by those floral notes and the amber tones oh 
I know I'm talking, I'm, I'm rambling and I'm not really making much sense, but it is such a hard fragrance to describe. It is super strong as well. I mean, this is only a 30 ml bottle. And I remember when I bought this, I was thinking this is going to last me no time at all because I, you know, I went through a phase where I was wearing it a lot, but you only need a little bit of this and it lasts all day long. So, um, for that reason, I, I don't tend to, I'm not moving through it very quickly. But I will say that the reason I, t I would turn to something like this to feel comforted, again, I think it's that sort of smoky dried grass vibe that I get from this that has that beautiful sweetness underneath. Right, well, my SD card just completely filled up. I should have changed it before I started the video. So if my alignment has changed, then that's why. Um, I forgot what I was saying. I think I was just about to tell you that the reason I turn to something like this as a comfort scent for me is because of the imagery I get. As I said, the image that I get when I smell this fragrance is of being, of walking through a field of golden grassy crop type stuff maybe wheat you know I have an image what was that movie there was I think it was a movie that had Kevin Costner in it fields of gold maybe I don't know where he was like walking through the field and his hands were just like touching the top of the wheat <laughs> something like that you know with a warm breeze flowing on you um, that's the image I get and for me that is very comforting because my family all live in the country, they live on properties, and that's, it makes me think of home, I think. Okay, that was a lot of talking about that fragrance, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, okay, next up is Bengal Rouge by Papillon Parfums. Again, I've talked about this many, many times. Interestingly, the reason, there's a couple of reasons why I like this fragrance as a comforting scent a because it's amber right it's an ambery scent what's well, a resinous sort of amber it is i think there's myrrh in here um, it's a little bit powdery it has rose in there as well um, i think i read somewhere that there's honey in it as well which i kind of i do sort of get the honey but the honey isn't super sweet but you know you just you get the scent of the honey without all of that sweetness that goes along with it although there is a sweet element to this it's a little bit animalic you know it's it was designed as a comforting scent i believe because liz moores who is the perfumer behind this it's called bengal ruse because it's named after her cat i mean well, it's, it was created in with her cat in the smell of her cat's fur in mind so for that reason i, I guess i i find it the story behind it itself is quite comforting um, and interestingly, I also associate this with a pet. I associate it with Poppy, my dog, because during the pandemic in 2020, well, when she got big enough to start walking in the mornings, I would get up really early and it was through winter and I would take her for walks really early in the morning. And she was only a little baby then. And I would wear, I was wearing this fragrance a lot during that time. I think I'd only just gotten the bottle at that point. So I went through a lot of this fragrance in the winter of 2020 because I was wearing it pretty much every day when I walked my dog. <laughs> and so for, for that reason, I totally associate this perfume with that time in my life, that time spent with Poppy when she was a little pup and training her and um, I don't know, just observing all of her crazy antics. And I used to, actually, I used to do a lot of story, Instagram stories in the mornings when I was walking Poppy. You know, if you'd followed me on Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of those mornings um, when I was wearing this fragrance. Good morning, everyone. Poppy and I are out for our morning walk. Uh, my scent of the morning is... Bengal Rouge by Papillon. Anyway, so that is why that is a comforting scent for me. The next one is a fairly new fragrance to my collection, but I have been wearing it quite a bit in the last few weeks. This is Weeping Rose by Chasing Scents. I did talk a, about this a little bit in my haul video. I do want to do a full video on this as well, where I just sort of go into a bit more detail about how this smells. I don't want to say too much 
I've already sort of got my thoughts together on that. I'll be filming it fairly soon, I think. So basically this is a rosebud tea fragrance. Um, it's definitely got that rose element, but it's not a super florally rose. It's, it's, it's rosebud. Um, so it's quite green and uh, there's a tea element to this as well. And I just find it is actually just really calming. And I find it, I mean, I wear this for lots of different scenarios, but I, over the last couple of months, I found that the scenario where I wear it the most is when I want a quiet moment to journal or to write. And um, I, I find this fragrance is really good for that, especially if I am also at the same time craving something a little bit sweeter. And I think also because that tea element is in there, I mean, tea, I just associate with you know, a comforting moment. Um, you know, if you want to calm somebody down, you want to have a deep and meaningful with someone or somebody wants to talk about their troubles or you want to talk about your troubles to somebody else, often they'll sit you down and offer you a cup of tea. So, I don't know. I don't, for some reason, I've started wearing this in moments where I'm, you know, trying to be calm and, and quiet and introspective. So that's kind of how I associate this fragrance now. The next one is Xi'an or Xi'an by Ormon Jane. I have talked about this before. I haven't worn this in a little while now, but I think I will start wearing it again now that it's getting cooler. We are coming into the cooler months here in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, and I, I have talked about this before and I think my description of it then, it's quite a woody fragrance. It's very creamy. Um, there is something a little bit spicy in there, maybe a little bit peppery, um, but there's a sweetness in here as well as there is with all of this line from Ormond Jane. And the, I think this is my favorite from the line. And I think the reason for that is because it has this element of peace and quiet and calm. And it makes me, the image that I get in my mind when I smell this is of a Japanese room with nothing in it, basically, sitting on bamboo floorboards, no fancy decorations or anything, just a very plain room, really light colored bamboo-y type floorboards, maybe creamy colored walls. I don't know, it's such a weird image, but that's the image that I get. I get an image of sitting in a room like that and just being very quiet and calm and peaceful, maybe meditating, I don't know. So this to me is a slightly sweet, woody, a little bit spicy um, and in floral. I think there's some, I don't know what florals are in here. I think there's rose, but you know, there's definitely florals that kind of soften it as well. So it's not too harsh and not too dry, you know? Um, it's very interesting. I really enjoy it. So we're nearly at the end. There's only five to go and I'm gonna zip through them really quickly. The next one is Memoir d'une Odieu by Gucci. Quite a controversial little fragrance this was when it came out. There was a lot of hype around it uh, before it was released. And then a lot of people were disappointed in it when it actually did come out. And I think they were disappointed because they felt like it didn't have a lot of longevity. Um, turns out there's probably a lot of people that don't like the smell of Roman chamomile. I personally didn't like Roman chamomile when I first smelled it either. I had a essential oil of Roman chamomile and I just wasn't a fan. Actually, I don't even know if it's Roman chamomile in here, but it's chamomile. You know, chamomile tea to me smells like wet dog and um, I don't enjoy that type of tea. I don't enjoy that tea at all. It smells like, it tastes like wet dog to me as well. Not that I really know what wet dog tastes like, even though I do own a dog. Um, <laughs> but I also had an essential oil of Roman chamomile and I used to diffuse that at night time before I went to bed, particularly on evenings when I was feeling anxious or having trouble sleeping. That's one of the uses of chamomile or Roman chamomile. Um, so when I read there was a chamomile note in this fragrance and that people were not liking it because of the chamomile note, I went, 
you know what, maybe I should check that out. So I did. I was quite surprised really how fresh this fragrance is. I think it's quite citrusy in the opening. But yeah, I, I do get a lot of that chamomile coming through in this fragrance. And so for that reason, I think it's an excellent fragrance. If you are feeling anxious, it's probably a great one to turn to. You quite enjoy it, even not just for the, the comforting aspect, but also just because I, I find it a really unique, interesting smelling perfume because again not many perfumes smell like this this does remind me of aromatherapy when i smell this but with some really nice light florals i think there might be freesia and stuff in here i can't i can't remember i know i'm, I'm really lazy i should have looked it up um, but it's sort of a really light citrusy floral kind of fragrance um, but again heavy on the chamomile so if you don't like chamomile you're probably not going to like it because it is very distinctive Next up is a fragrance that I would choose purely because it reminds me of being surrounded by very motherly women in my childhood. This doesn't smell like my mother because this is not a fragrance that my mother wore, but lots of my mother's friends used to wear this fragrance. Lots of my friends' mothers used to wear this fragrance. And so consequently, it makes me feel very comforted because I feel like it brings back those memories of being surrounded by people who cared about me and feeling very safe. Uh, this is Samsara Eau de Toilette. Um, you're probably well and truly familiar with this one by now. I chose the Eau de Toilette over the Eau de Parfum because again, the Eau de Parfum packs a lot of punch and I think the Eau de Toilette gets to that beautiful softer dry down a lot quicker than well in fact I think it just opens the way that the eau de parfum dries down um, I feel like I also get more of the sandalwood element from the eau de toilette versus the eau de parfum which I think has a lot punchier florals in there so um, just generally I, I really enjoy this I find this also to be a little bit more powdery than the eau de parfum the eau de parfum um, to me has kind of a waxy element to it which I think comes from those really lush florals that are in there like the ylang ylang so um, yeah this one is a really gorgeous one an easy one for me to reach for when I want to feel comforted how many times can I say comforted in one video the next one is Le Bleu Eau de Toilette by Guerlain this is a really gorgeous floral fragrance. Um, I often hear it described, and I'm not, I don't think I've ever smelled the Eau de Parfum version of this, so I'm not sure if the note listings are different, if the, if the scent profile is different. But this one is often described as being quite a pensive fragrance. I don't necessarily associate it with being pensive I, I I do associate it with I don't know I kind of want to say I associate it with dusk so that that moment at dusk when the birds start to quieten down the sky gets darker the air gets still um, I definitely that's kind of what I think of when I smell this perfume but I wouldn't necessarily it's not sad to me. It gets described as being a sad fragrance and I, I don't feel like it's a sad fragrance. I just feel like it's a quiet fragrance. So what does it smell like? Um, there's a lot of florals in here. I think um, there's carnation and rose and although I think there might be um, tuberose in here as well. It has that kind of lush vibe to it but I think I get more of the airy sort of florals in this one. It's also got sort of a, a spicy element in the base. I think it has quite a bit of benzoin in it. So the sweetness isn't super vanilla-y. It's, it's more spicy, sweet resin that you get with benzoin. Anyway, so that is Le Bleu. This is one that I wore quite a bit actually last year, I think, in the winter time. Um, I've barely touched it really. I find this to be quite powerful for an eau de toilette. I feel like it has pretty good longevity and I can smell this for most of the day. So I don't wear much of this when I wear it, but 
Um, I think I'll start wearing it more because I actually really do like this. The next one is another Guerlain. This is Vol de Nuit. And this one I'm not overly familiar with. I do find it to be a fairly quiet kind of fragrance. It's, um, it's quite citrusy and bright in the opening, but there is a woody element that's immediately apparent and it's quite spicy as well. So even though it's bright and fresh, it's not, it's not a sparkly fragrance. It's not a happy, sparkly, bright fragrance. It's fresh, but it's, I don't know, it has, it has a quiet tone to it. I think those woods and the spices, and I don't think there's that many woods. I think there's sandalwood um, and some spices in there. And I think there might also be a bit of um, oak moss as well, but mostly it's florals. I remember reading the note listing ages ago and thinking, wow, that's a long list of florals that's in there. But they're all kind of really breezy and light. And the good thing about that is they don't overpower that citrus and they don't overpower the woods and the spices. So it's, I wouldn't call, even though there's a whole bunch of florals in here, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a really florally kind of fragrance. I would, if I was just smelling it without having read any of the notes, I would call it more of a woody fragrance that is maybe a little bit aromatic. I don't know, maybe more green. The reason I like it is because it's not overpowering. Even though it's got a lot going on, it's very light and translucent. The wear is, seems very translucent. And I don't know, there's those uplifting elements of the citrus that kind of, I don't know, maybe helps to lift your mood a little bit. Um, it's certainly one that I would wear when I don't want anything to dense or anything that might weigh me down. It's actually very subtle and I really, I really do enjoy it. I don't know why I don't wear it more. Uh, Five O'Clock Eau Gingembre by Serge Lutens. I really, really enjoy this fragrance. I love ginger in fragrances. You all know that already. And one of the reasons I love wearing ginger notes in fragrances um, is because on days where I just don't feel very good, you know, I might feel a little bit queasy in my stomach or just feel a little bit off. I find ginger is, in food medicine, ginger is um, an anti-nausea um, food. What, what am I, spice? <laughs> what am I trying to say? Use your words, Cherie. The reason I like wearing ginger fragrant, ginger notes in fragrance is because A, they're very warming, they're very, they're kind of spicy. A, ginger is a smell and a taste that I resonate with not feeling very well um, because I tend to have it when I'm not feeling very well. And, uh, but I have it lots of other times too. I actually really love the taste of ginger. So I, I like to reach for this as a comforting kind of fragrance because um, this particular fragrance is, yeah, it's got that ginger element to it, but it's also a bit spicy, but it's also very woody. And I think I've decided, having looked at all the fragrances that I've been through today, is that woody notes, sandalwood, dry woods, cashmere wood, vetiver, patchouli, they all are notes that I clearly am drawn to in times when I want to feel less anxious, I want to feel calm, I don't want to feel overwhelmed by the perfume that I'm wearing, but I also don't necessarily just want to wear something light. So Five O'Clock Eau Gingembre is a very, um, it's a really complicated fragrance actually. I think there's a tea element in here as well, which would also help with the wanting to feel a little bit calmer kind of scenario. Um, but the, the, the ginger in here is quite warm. It's very spicy. It's not as light and zesty as you would get in some other fragrances like, um, the Sizzly, the Eau de Sizzly number three, which is one that I really like, but that ginger note is that really bright, zesty ginger. This is not that. This is a lot darker. It's spicy. 
um, but it's still not heavy. It's not a heavy fragrance. Um, and again, as I mentioned, it's very woody and it makes me smile. So what, else, what other reason do you need to wear a scent to, for a comforting scenario? Um, because it just makes you smile. I mean, that's a pretty good reason. Surely that's going to lift your mood. So yeah, as I mentioned, there's tea, ginger, there's woody notes. I think there's patchouli in here as well. It's quite ambery, but it's not super sweet. There is a hint of sweetness to it. It's very subtle, uh, but mostly I would classify this as a spicy, woody ginger fragrance. It smells like, it smells like a warm kitchen to me. So that is five o'clock Ocean Jambre. That was like a totally messed up description of hadn't actually, um, I, I've been talking for a really long time. So I'm running out of, my brain is not really functioning. I think I need water. And the next one is actually the perfume that started this whole idea of doing this video because uh, I mentioned that on Instagram, I had posted something about comforting scents and it was actually, to introduce this fragrance called Lost Wanderer by a brand called P.O. Sim. I hope I said that right. This is a brand started by a lovely lady on who I've been in touch with on Instagram. Her name is Pervy and she created this fragrance. So this is an Australian brand and I don't want to talk about it too much yet because I'm still getting to know it. I have worn a fair bit of it. And yes, that is all me. I didn't decant any of it. Pervy sent me this bottle uh, to provide feedback to her and give my thoughts on it. There is no obligation for me to talk about it, but I'm just letting you know I did not pay for this bottle. And I do really like it. Uh, but I don't want to talk about it yet. I want to wear it a little bit more as the weather cools because it has been quite warm here and we're only just starting to have slightly cooler days. So I do want to have a chance to wear it in the cooler weather because I think that is a scenario where I'm likely to wear it the most. Although I did very much enjoy wearing it on some warmer days as well. This was the reason why I made the post because I uh, have worn this a couple of times over the last few weeks where in a, on days when I felt like a little bit anxious and I wanted to feel, I don't know, Karma, and you know there's been a lot going on in the world in the last few weeks so there have been many instances of wanting to feel calm this is a tobacco dominant fragrance it's uh, on an ambery base uh, there's quite a bit of vanilla in here there's lots of spices in here so it's totally right up my alley i read the note description and it just went uh this is like this is my type of fragrance Tobacco for me can go either way. I mean, I don't have that many tobacco dominant fragrances. There was a time when I used to think that I could smell tobacco in just about anything. <laughs> but I think like tobacco can be different in different scenarios. A lot of the time when I feel like I'm getting tobacco for some, from something that actually doesn't list tobacco in it, uh, I feel like it's more of that really dried leaf, um, the dry leaves, not the, not that moist, humid tobacco note that you get in a lot of tobacco dominant fragrances. I think because of, of the ambery base um, and that beautiful, this is that really lovely, lush, humid kind of tobacco note with um, some really beautiful spices like cinnamon and clove and so I don't, I, again I, I say I don't want to talk about it too much and I've literally just talked for five minutes about it so I, I'm, I'm enjoying it I will tell you that much and uh, I just want to sort of wear it more in the cooler months to get you know a more rounded view of it okay so we have come to the end of the list okay you'll be pleased to know we're finally at the end and uh, I'm sorry if that was really too long and rambly uh, look, there are many different scenarios where I want to feel comforted. You know, it's not just all about wanting a hug or it's not just about being anxious. You know, the, the, the diff I want different things at different times or different things during different moments. Comfort can be different things to me. And so I feel like this is a good range and these are the ones that I like to wear in different scenarios. And um, some of these I definitely pull for more than others because 
there are scenarios that crop up more often than others. So uh, I do tend to wear the sim similar ones over and over again. And I'll ask again, as I did on Instagram, you know, what you like to wear when you want to feel comforted. And do you have a similar thing to me where there's different types of, uh, for want of a better word, discomfort that you experience where you want a different kind of scent for, in order to feel comforted? So I'd be curious to know if anyone else thinks like that or is it just me? Anyway, if you enjoyed the list, then please do give this a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. It does help me out and I will see you in the next one. Bye. So you paint a picture of a face. A face